Jesus name we pray. Almighty Father, we thank you, Lord, because of opportunity you have given to us this morning. We glorify your name because it is out of your love. You brought us once again to this place. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, we are praying by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. No one among us will go empty-handed in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for those people who are here and those people who are still coming on their way. We pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will give them safe journey in Jesus' name. We put every department into your hand this morning. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, every one of us will be justified in the name of Jesus Christ. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we shall go with testimony in Jesus' name. Thank you, O Lord, because you are the Lord that answered prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's open our in book to in 169. In 169. GHS 169.
Praise the Lord. It's time for Sadi Scripture. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, Lord in heaven, we thank you for this morning. Father, we thank you once again for bringing us to your presence. Father, we thank you for the message that we heard last week, Sunday, that we were here in your presence. Father, we learned how Naomi's husband took her and his children, the whole family, away from the city of holiness. Father, in search for a better place for his family. We saw how, Lord in heaven, he lost his life, the life of his children, and Naomi was heavy-hearted. Father, we also learn here on the pulpit how it is worth it. Lord in heaven, that it is worth it to serve you. And Father, that's why we're here this morning. Father, we've come this morning to continue the message again. Father, to continue to hear from you. Because we are soldiers. We are soldiers fighting a war that, Father, we know we have won. Father, we're just waiting for time to come. Lord, we just pray this morning that continue to uplift us. And Father, give us the strength as we take this journey. Lord, give us the perception, give us the wisdom to take as many as possible along with us. Father, we pray for today's morning's message. Lord, talk to our heart. Even as difficult as the message is going to be, Father, open our ears, open our heart. Father, for you say, let our hearts not be hardened, that we don't listen to your word. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Father, we know that our souls are saved. Father, we know that our souls are in your kingdom. But Lord, open our hearts so that we'll continue to grow from strength to strength. That Father, we'll become warriors for you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today's side of scriptures is very important. Um, I want us all to listen. The reason why I said today's side of scriptures is very important is that I'll give a few examples, and uh, please, the examples that I'll give is not directed at anyone. The reason is that this message speaks to me also. Amen? So I want us all to listen carefully and take it to heart that is our Father in heaven that is talking to us this morning. Like I said, last week, our pastor spoke about it is worth it. It is worth it to serve the Lord. No matter what the suffering, no matter what the burden is, that my brothers and sisters, it is worth it to serve our Father in heaven. And that is the reason why we are created and we are made. You know, my sister taught me a song. When I was a kid, I'll never forget. What is this world all about? Is it to be born and be rich? Is it to be born and have the highest qualification that you can think about in the world? Is it to be born to hold all offices in the world? Or the question for you and me, is it to be born to serve the Lord? I remember as a child, I used to love the song. I used to love the fact that it is born to serve the Lord. You know, what is life all about in this world? What is life all about in this world? Is it to be born to be a rich man and then die? So you give an answer, yes or no? no. Is it to be born to serve the Lord and then die? Yes. Praise the Lord. So you see that it is very important to take our young ones to the house of the Lord. The songs and the things that I have learned 
when I was a child has given me strength till today. Let's not neglect the fact that we continue to teach our young in the house of the Lord. Why do I always, re why do I always refer to the young in the house of the Lord? Because they're the future. Without them, evangelism will stop with us. And uh, that means uh, all the work that we have done is going to be for nothing. That is not going to be our portion in Jesus' name. So like I said, last week you saw how Naomi and uh, the husband, they moved in search of greener pasture and how he died. And um, instead of them returning, his children got married. And the city where they went to is, was a city of uh, idolism. They were not people who worshipped God. They worshipped other gods. And so we went ahead and spoke about how it is very important that when you want to move from one place to the other, how we need to pray. We need to pray before we make the move. And that when we make the move without praying, there's still chance for us to correct. There is still chance for us to turn around and follow our Father in heaven. Today, we're going to look at a lesson 679. And I said the scriptures is uh, page number 17. If you have said the scriptures volume, 53 to 56. Praise the Lord. Let's take our memories verse together. It's going to be from the book of Ruth. Uh, the book of Ruth. So Naomi returns with Ruth to Bethlehem, Judah. Ruth chapter 1 verse 16. After the count of two, if we can take it together. One, two. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. Praise the Lord. I will digress a little bit. I, I, I think that, you know, when... Um, 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 I think uh, if you get married in a church, is one of the, the, the verses that I read, you know, uh, to say, uh, the wife says, my people are going to be your people, that I'll serve your God. And then later on, we digress and uh, say, why are you taking me back to church? Amen. My father told me a story of old. He says that um, it's always very important to marry from the church. He said that um, he was somebody... I always refer to him on the pulpit because each time I come to the pulpit, I remember. I remember what he has taught me concerning the Lord. Amen? The question for you is that that's why we need to be the children of God. So that our children also will remember what we've taught them when they, when they grow up. Is it, what would your child say you've taught them? You know, I am proud to say a lot of times. He said that, uh, you know, that if you go to the beer parlor to marry someone in the beer parlor, in the beer, uh, in the pub, one day he or she will want to drag you back to that place. But if you go to the house of the Lord and marry, even if you go astray, one day your spouse will drag you back to church. Amen? What is saying? So, Ruth chapter 1, we are going to read verse 6 to 22. You know, like I said, our previous chapter gave us an ugly, ugly, um, an ugly picture of what happened to Elim Melech and his family in the city of Moab, how they suffered and how he died and left Naomi and her two daughter-in-laws. In this study, we're going to look at, and we'll read, we'll look at the fact that then the famine was over in Bethlehem, the city of the Lord. And it was, when Naomi heard this, it was time to return home. It is the same thing that if you go astray, in the word of the Lord. That when you hear the word of God again, it's time for you to turn around. 
If you have backslided in your own word, it's time for you to turn around when you hear the word of God. You know, to turn around. Whatever it is your situation is, that when, when the Lord talks to you, turn around and go back to him. Amen? He will always... So it is good that Naomi did that. That we should always be looking unto the Lord. And the reason why I said we need to listen carefully and that this message, you know, touched me and I hope it's going to touch you also. That Naomi said the truth to her daughter-in-laws. She told them the way it is. She told them the way it is. She said, when she said, come with me, but she told them the way it is. They're going to a different city. They're going to where their way of life is going to completely change. It's not going to be easy. It is the same thing that when we become born again, Christ has asked us to, everybody to carry their cross. He said it's not easy. If it was easy, he would have told me and you. He said we will suffer for his own case, for his own sake. We'll be persecuted for his own sake. So when we have believers that are converted, we need to tell them the truth. But we also need to not scare them away. Amen? To tell them the truth, but also not scare them away from the house of the Lord. To make them understand that the house of the Lord is shelter for me and you and also them. Ruth chapter 1 verse 6. And I read. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughter, daughters-in-law with her. And they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her daughters-in-law, Go, return each, of, each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as they have dealt with the dead and with me. So this is the time that she's counseling them. Amen? The Lord grants you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are thee yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? She's talking to them. She's explaining to them the consequences of them following her to Bethlehem, Judah. Turn again, my daughters. She continued. Go your way. She didn't stop there. So when we preach the word of God, and we'll come and see that, when we preach the word of God, we need to explain to people that yes, when you become born again, it's a place of rest. It's a place that you're no longer in bondage. It's a place whereby there is no longer damnation. There's no condemnation, but there's only hope. Hope for life everlasting. But I'll tell you, my brothers and sisters, that it's always good to explain to young converts what they're walking themselves into. Amen? But that even though temptations will come, that there is help. Even though suffering will come, there is remedy. That they are better off in the house of our Father in heaven than to be in the hands of the devil. Because the devil only comes and steals and destroys. The devil never gives. Always takes and takes and takes. But to make them understand. You know, the politicians will always say it's a binary choice. When you hear them talk, they say, well, it's a binary choice. I have to choose. I have to choose. The question is that if you're listening to this message and you haven't chosen yet, you need to listen carefully 
and choose wisely. Choosing righteousness, being spotless, being blameless, that everything from you, so that when you are ministering to converts, that look, everything is lifted up you, your burden is gone, everything is gone. You know, like when you become born again, you are like a child. You know, like my son seated that he doesn't work. When he's hungry, he'll just tell me he's hungry. When there's a problem, he will just ask. And that is how the, the kingdom of God is. To explain to them that it's a place where you become a child. Because our Father in heaven says, put all my burden, sorry, all your burdens on me. And I'll lift them all away. It's a binary choice. Or are you going to choose a place where you stay in the bosom of the enemy and continue to struggle and continue to suffer and continue to work hard? Grace comes with the fact that in the house of our Father in heaven, hard work is taken away, is replaced by grace. All you have to say is just, Father, take care of me, and he does it. Because he says, only by faith. Praise the Lord. I want us to think carefully when we minister. When we minister, we need to explain to believers that it's a binary choice. You're either here or you're here. There's no middle. There's no gray. There are two different colors. Naomi was explaining that. I am old. Do you want to follow? And Naomi said, turn away, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there yet more sons in my womb? Turn again, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have an husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, and she also bear sons. She is saying, go away, go live your life. Even if I get a husband and, you know, bear a child, how, when am I going to give birth? And when will the children grow up to be old enough to marry you? Will ye tarry for them till they grow? Sorry, because they were grown. Will ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again and upright kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth cleaved unto her. What a passion. And she said, Behold, their sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou, at the, thou after their sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. So the two went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass. And when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? Verse 20, And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty had dealt very bitterly with me. Amen. Have you been in those situations and you've said that? Do not call me blessed. Call me cursed. Amen. It is okay to complain sometimes. That is why he's our Father in heaven. But what it is not okay is for you to dwell and consistently stay in that complaining mode. Tell him, whine to your Father in heaven. He will turn things around for you. Don't stay in the same state. 
Like Naomi said, call me. If you are bitter and you are, you know, who, who best can you go to the presence and cry out and say your pain to? If not our Father in heaven, he will lift it away. Be not afraid. See, there is no way of talking to God. There is no structured way of talking to God. There is not. Go to, you know, like you, you go to him, you say it, apologize to him, say sorry, Father. You know, talk to him. In your time of despair, he expects you to come before him and seek guidance and seek consolation for your heart. I pray that whatever you're going through today, the Father in heaven will console you. I went out full and the Lord had brought me home again empty. She said, why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord had testified against me and the Almighty had afflicted me. So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. Amen. It is okay. She was grieving. You know, one time I went to a naming ceremony and um, the child was named, I don't know, is it Olua Femi? And the pastor was like, don't, when he grows up, please make sure that he doesn't change his name to Foley. What is Foley? Foley means foolishness. You know, changing your name because how the Lord has dealt with you. A name is given to you for a purpose. You know, like the choice for the name for my son. Amazende. But it actually is a word, Amazende Yonde. That's a word, it's a whole sentence, Amazende Yonde. It means that it is the Father in heaven who has ordained him to be born. That there is nothing any human being will do that will have allowed him to be born. It is okay. It is okay to be hurt. It is okay to come to a state where that is why we still have the flesh. Jesus himself on the cross, he said, Father, if it is because of me, take away the cup. Take this cup away from me. But he turned around because he allowed the spirit to talk to him because he's also God the Son. And he said, Father, it is not my will, but let their will be done. That is why he gave us the spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to me and you, so that when the flesh is dragging us down, the Holy Spirit pulls us up and lifts us up. We saw how it was very, very difficult. for Ruth, but Oprah went back to her people. She left and went back to her people, but Ruth never left. Sometimes in our congregation, we have issues. We come through problems. You know, there were times that even myself, I had thought about leaving the congregation and going to a different congregation. Struggling, why? Because of issues that have come up within the congregation, within our own congregation. But each time, what gives me strength to stay? Is that allow the congregation to die because of me, because of my actions. So finally, is that what I'm going to tell the Father? Is that what I'm going to tell the Father in heaven that a congregation then, they, see, for every action, for everything that we do, you'll be accounted for at the end. 
because then the father is going to ask you, okay, that person's soul, that person's soul, that person's soul, you think that the souls were not important for you to have stayed to bring them unto you, sorry, unto me. That is why I said today that this message touched me and I believe it's going to touch you also. That we also need to be careful how we talk to ourselves. Let's say the truth, but let's make it in such a way that we don't scare people away from the house of God. You know, I was looking at it and I, I said that God never allows anything to happen without a reason. There is nothing, if you are a child of God, there is nothing that comes to you that is not because of a reason. Do you think that it was by accident that the Lord allowed me to meet all of you? It is not. It is not. We might not know. Maybe it's for the Lord to allow you to make me see things that I have not been seeing. Maybe the Lord is using you to help me stay steadfast. Or maybe the other way around, that the Lord is allowing the interaction that we have, no matter how little that that interaction is, to keep you faithful, to keep you straight on the journey. No wonder last week our pastor preached it is worth it. In our struggles in the house of the Lord, just like Naomi said the truth, let's be truthful to one another. But let us also be watchful. As we are truthful to one another, let us be watchful that we don't scare away people from the house of God. Because like I said the last time that I I, the last time, I will soon go into the side of the scriptures and finish. But even if this is the only thing I'm going to say, it's worth it. The last time that I, I, I preached here, I basically, basically spoke about, do you understand what the other person is passing through? That why Paul became a successful minister is because Paul himself, he said to the poor, I became poor. To the Jews, I became a Jew. To the Gentiles, I became a Gentile. Paul didn't say, well, that brother is poor, so I cannot talk to that brother. But that sister is too wretched. Why is she coming to the church? How is she or he how are they allowed to even pray in the house of the Lord? How are they allowed to be ushers in the house of God? Ruth stayed. In the olden days, in the times of the Jews, at that time when a woman becomes a widow, they, they, a lot of times, have been taken advantage of. They're always ignored. Sometimes they have no food, they lack. They become in a state of poverty. They're most times poverty stricken. That's why Naomi was saying, I'm old, I have nothing. Why are you coming to suffer? I'm not even gonna have children. Even if I do, it's gonna take a long time. But guess what? Ruth had faith. Oprah turned away, but Ruth had faith. Do you have the faith of Ruth? That even when you see that the chances are slim, that the road is bleak, you're saying forward ever, backward never. 
It was famine, like I said, that prompted Naomi and the family to move. What was your circumstances? I spoke the last time that me, like a lot of you, are immigrants. We all move for several reasons. Whatever reason that you have moved, whatever place that you found yourself, have you plugged yourself into where you need to hear the word of God so that you remain strengthened? We saw that the news of how God dealt with Naomi got to, it got to uh, Judea, Bethlehem, Judea. Also, the good news came to Naomi that there was no longer famine. When we are teaching new converts, when we are spreading the word of God, we need to make them understand that it is good news. It is good news that Christ came to die for me and you to save us from sin. We need to let them understand. What? Because when before Christ was born, he said, I bring you good tidings. That was the message that was brought to Mary. It must be sincere. You bring a message when you bring good news. It must be sincere. You must be enthusiastic about it. If you're teaching the word of God to someone and you're saying, Jesus loves you. You know, uh, uh, Jesus loves you. Uh, Jesus loves you. He cares for you. He came and died for you. He took away your sin like he took, he took away my sin. Look at me now. I am fresh. Look at me. I have no problem because he has taken away the problems that I'm supposed to be going through. That is how we are supposed to teach the word of God. The good news of tithing. We need to explain that God has visited the earth with good tidings. That is Jesus himself. That he brought the message of peace and salvation. That there is no longer condemnation. And there is no longer death if you give your life to him. Challenges and commendation of consecration. At a cost. Naomi was living Bethlehem, Judah. But Ruth was consecrated to the Lord. It never mattered. Naomi was saying, I'll never have children anymore. I am old. And Ruth says, excuse me, where you go, I will go. Your God is going to be my God. Where you die, I will die. Is that your message? Are you consecrated unto the Lord? Is it easy? No, it's not. It is not. I have said it that uh, Naomi explained to her daughter-in-laws that these are the cost. This is going to be the cost of you going with me. And I have said that it is okay for us to discuss with believers. But like I said. We should be careful how we spread the message so that we do not discourage them. Like I said, it's a binary choice. You know, if I come to you and tell you, well, if you take that road, um, you know, there is food, uh, there's food for one day. There's food for one day and then uh, you will enjoy and everything and then you're going to be butchered. Then I say you take the second road. It's hard. It's difficult. The road, you know, it's rocky. Sometimes you climb mountains. But as you're rocky going, there is food on the way. As you're climbing mountains, there is food on the way. And finally, at the end, there's paradise waiting for you. Which one will you choose? To enjoy for one day? And then be butchered? Or to take the rocky road? That there is help, that there is food, 
until you get to a final place. It is very important. As Naomi left, you know, even Christ himself, he has asked the question. He tested the seriousness of his disciples. He had asked, will ye also go away because of the suffering? Will you leave the house of the Lord because of what you think is suffering? Is it worth it? Counting losses after compromise, despite the challenges of Naomi and Ruth, they had strength and they resolved and they cleaved unto the Lord. They went back to Bethlehem, Judah. With everything, with everything, with all the calamities, she still took the decision to go back to Bethlehem, Judah. Despite the physical losses, she had reason to give thanks to the Lord. If not, she wouldn't have returned to Bethlehem, Judah. Are you counting your blessings? Are you counting your blessings? I was listening to a song in my language that said that uh, no matter what you think you're going through, we have actually won the war. Amen? No matter what, and he says, continue to say that we should be on our knees and be thanking God every day because we've won the war. We've defeated the enemy on the cross. You should count yourself worthy. Naomi, despite the losses, she counted herself worthy. That's why she returned to Bethlehem, Judah. If you have turned around, and left the house of the Lord. If you're thinking of turning around and leaving the house of the Lord, I want to encourage you this morning that you have won. You have won the war. Whatever you're seeing, they're just pieces and fuzzy things. You have won the war. Just have faith. It's a binary choice. It's a binary choice and we have chosen. We have chosen a better choice, Christ, just like Naomi did. Is your life like Ruth or like Oprah? Let's take our questions. Question number one, what is the difference between the decision made by Ruth and Oprah? Opa. Amen. Praise the Lord. In disseminating the news of good news, sorry, in disseminating the news of God's good news, what are the essential qualities we should possess? What are the qualities that were mentioned? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You know, like I made the example, like if you come and uh, you're saying, Jesus loves you, you know, you know, uh, my brother or sister, you know, Jesus will love you. Uh -uh, he will. Oh, are you saying you have come to the house of rest? When you give your life to our Father in heaven, it's a place of rest. The enthusiasm, the truthness, and the compelling argument that you give to other people as you preach the word of God and you give examples of your testimony. That is why we need to give testimony of what God has done for me and you when we spread the word of God. That is why I like to give testimony. Amen. What lessons do we learn from our past return to Moab?
the man. If we turn our book to Jesus spoke about that in the parable of the seeds that are sown. Amen. In that parable in Matthew chapter 13 verse 19 to 21 when Jesus gave the parable of the seeds that were sown. Amen. Matthew chapter 13 verse 19 to 21 and he said that when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understood it, it then cometh the wicked one and catch it and catch it away the which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Amen. But he that receiveth the seed into the stony places, the same is he that heareth the word and anon with joy received it. Yet had he not root in him, himself, but Dure it for, for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by end, by he is offended. I mean, if you continue, you see the other person, the other person who received the seed that was planted on the fatal line. That's Ruth. Even Jesus himself gave the example. Amen. Lack of perseverance. That was up. Ruth was persistent. The root that, sorry, the seed that fell on the fertile ground grew, had roots, and flourished. Is that you? Itemized roots resolve in her statement to Naomi's urge. Amen. Amen. And, and she was looking, so she was looking onto a goal. She had a goal. You're right, she had a strong determination and she was looking onto heaven. Amen? Are you looking onto heaven? She said, you've dealt kindly with me. I'm here. You know, a lot of times, uh, uh, a lot of women are always fighting with their mother-in-laws, amen, at the loggerheads. But Ruth did not do that. She said, where you go, I will go. In my point of view, I think that Ruth had a very good relationship with her mother-in-law right from the beginning, amen. Point out reasons Naomi was wrong in blaming God for her wars. Why was Naomi wrong? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And she was foolish in doing that. What are the proof that Naomi did not return empty? What is the proof that Naomi? Praise the Lord. So, you know, like I said from the beginning, our time is like I said from the beginning, sometimes, you know, we think about leaving our brethren. But the question is that, are you living souls that will perish? Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. Lord in heaven, let your word sink into our hearts. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I've descended to follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Praise the Lord. Our teachers have taught us a lot of lessons today, and then they always tell us that the best teacher in, the, in this life is self-experience. He taught us, he taught about his personal experience, uh, and then from there, we will see 
that the word of the Lord ever remain the same. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will continue to dwell in it forever and ever in Jesus' name. Do we have anybody that have questions from what our teacher have said or any little contribution or what is not clear? If there's no question, I totally believe that our teacher taught everything. But let's go to the book of Ruth, chapter 2. Ruth, chapter 2. The book of Ruth. Chapter Judges. The book of Ruth, chapter 2, verse 22. 22. 22, 22. And Naomi said unto her daughter in law, Blessed be he of the Lord, who has not let off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. And the root the Moabah said, he said, he said unto me also, you shall keep fast my, by my young men until they have ended all my affairs. I think that's no, no. Please, I'm very sorry. Let's go to Ruth 1, 22, 22. I'm very sorry. So, and she said unto them, call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. And went out full, and the Lord had brought me home again empty. Why then call you me now me? Sin the Lord as testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me. Many of us, when we face a lot of challenges, when challenges face us, we quickly forget what God has, has done. And sometimes it's like, God, why was I even born at all? Why? Did you help me among this poor family? Or why? You have not let me come through this generation. Or why you have not let me become this and let me become that? This is what really happened to the uh, uh, Eli Milik in the first instance. When the famine happened, when the famine occurred, they didn't look back and they didn't look at what God can do. They limited the ability of God. They limited the power of God. They didn't, they are forgotten that they, to the extent that they are forgotten that the, this mob they are going to is a cause generation. It's like when Lord went to Sodom and Gomorrah. They didn't look at, at, that, at that at all. They didn't, count, they didn't count what God has done for them in the past, and as a result of this, they quickly make that decision that, no, things have gone wrong. The land of Jerusalem can never be like the day they want again. And as a result of this, they decided to move. In any time we want to do that, my dear brother, my dear sister, look up. No road is very, there is no cloud. I mean, there is no rain without cloud. There is no sunshine without heat. What else can I say? Even the food we are eating at home, the product of it is not better until there is fire. Look at that gold. Look at that cloth you are putting on. Many of them, they went through fire become, before they become what you are putting on today. And when you put them on, they become shiny. 
all this, are, all this is, is a metaphor that we human beings we need to be looking at any time we are passing one thing or the other and not quickly make a decision. Count your blessing. And you will see what God has done for you. Never, never, and never rush to that's why we have leaders. That's why you are breathing. By the time you tell them what you have been passing through, I am very sure by let's say now I uh, El Melek have decided to consult the elders of Israelites. Before the decision was made, they would have told him that, look, this God you are looking at, during this period, this is what we went through in the land of Egypt before we came out. When we were in Widane, this is what we went through before we came out. In the Red Sea, this is what we went through before we came out. They didn't. They are forgotten all what God has done in the past. And this is what always happened to we human beings. Only be steadfast and focused. And I thank God for our teacher. If, let's say, in the past, you do not realize that, you have now known in the present that that God has never changed and they will never change. In the book of Psalms 68, verse 19, the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms 68, the book of Psalms 68, verse 19, the book of Psalms 68, verse 19. The Bible says, Blessed be the Lord who daily load us with benefit. Even the God of our salvation, with the God of our salvation. What do you see there? Daily. And if we say the Bible cannot be a liar, I want you to know this is another thing you need to hold on to the is daily blessing you. Then why? Do you want to take a decision because of one suffering or the other and without consulting God? We have learned about a lot of things, how it turned the water, a bitter water, it turned it to its sweetness more. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, the bitterness that is in our life, God is going to turn it to sweet one in the name of Jesus Christ. Just a matter of dedication. The book of Philippians, chapter 4, 5, 6. Book of Philippians, chapter 4, 5, 6. Paul looked at all these things, but thank God for the grace. All of us, we always say that there's nothing God cannot do. He has power. He can deliver. He can kill. He can raise. And then he can say, there should be rain, there will be rain. You can, you can look at if in the time of Gideon. Gideon say, okay. Do not let rain, do not let rain fall onto this pen, and then it, it is done. Then, this, this, okay, this is my pen. Let rain fall on only this pen and all other land. Do not let rain fall on it, and I mean, it was done. Then, Paul become an apost apostle, and then he was preaching. And God knew that he was working for him. And God did not deliver him from being punished. If it is you, what kind of God is that? Let us be sincere. This is the man that he know himself when he was in real soul. No that particular person can dare touch him. To the extent that he was going from the house, he doesn't care the house of that. Either you are, you are a centurion, you are army, you are a politician, you are not a, you are a civilian. Paul was ready, was going to the house. He, he was going from house to house. Not that he, I mean, he, he, he left one, go to another. No, he was going from house to house, 
sending people, beating them seriously with certificate in hand with authority. Now we are now saying the person that owned the whole authority. Now Paul decided to be serving that man. It was during that man, God, when Paul was serving God, he received much of punishment. If we are Paul, I'm very sure we ask him, who is this God? And in, in many, in, when we are in our room, many times we have been thinking that he, during my own, when I am ordinary, I know who I am. Now that I'm a spiritual, why should I be, be punished? But Paul said in the Philippians 4, chapter 6, Philippians 4, chapter 6, let's see what it says. Philippians 4, chapter 6. That's how you know he has given God everything. And I believe by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, every one of us, we are going to give God everything we have in Jesus' name. Philippians 4 says, be careful for nothing. When there is no, when there is food, when there is no food. When there is certificate, when there is no certificate. When there is cloth to wear, when there is no cloth to wear. When there is husband, when there is no husband. When there is wife, when there is no wife. When there is children, when there is no children. When there is something to boast of, when there is no something to boast of. Paul said, be careful for nothing. Be not unto all men, the Lord is at hand. I mean, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. So whenever you die in that kind of trouble, my dear brother, my dear sister, if you are not tested, if you, are, if you do not suffer, who else do you want to be suffered? As a child of God, you need to read it so that your taste Will be, um, your faith will be tested. And Paul said, be prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. This word, Naomi, I mean, El Meleki forgot. He was so proud. That I, that's why my richness in this land of Jerusalem, now I will not find food to eat. Enough money I have will not be okay for me. I'm thinking of investment. I'm thinking of having a, a land of to plant. I'm thinking, I will rather go. To, I will rather go to a, another country whereby there's weakness and they know they are God that bled them. My dear brother, my dear sister, if that decision is being taken, you are saying bye bye to the Lord. The end of it always bitter. And that's why you, you thank God, some of us, you still find us in this church. And then, to be sincere, even if my brother will accept with me, to be sincere, it's so almost seven years now, that's why that we are no more than this, we are doing this, we have no reason to regret, to be sincere. No one among us have have a single reason to regret for taking all the decisions you are taking. And if you want to boast of anything, we can boast in the Lord spiritually. In all areas of our life, we have been thanking God. And I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, as we have learned today, we will be steadfast in Jesus' name. We will be looking at unseen. And we will be thanking God for the present situation we are. And surely, I want, to, I want you to agree with me. For every one of us, you may not know us. But the, the situation we are, at that, around seven years ago, was not the situation, it's not the situation we are now. 
and I can boast of it, I can boast of it, I can boast of it, by the grace of the Lord, we are better than we are better off. Because physically, we do not lost. Materially, God has blessed us. Financially, <laughs> you know I like boasting. Welcome to the welcome to God. I'm not begging it before I eat. And I know no one among us is begging. Except, welcome to the sharing in the house of the Lord. And I pray that Almighty God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Stay with this world. And it will stay with you. And the joy of the Lord will continue to be sufficient for us in Jesus' name. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. We can rise up and just thank Him for the presence. Praise the name of the Lord because of where you are. Look up and thank God for all what has done. Look back. Look at all those difficulties. We are day to day. And I'm telling you, the present one, you are thinking that they are problem. They are not. They are ladder to your progress. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, as God set to root, to the extent that among two women that are in the Bible, Ruth was one of them. In the genealogy of Jesus Christ, Ruth was there. Only because he determined. Your determination will promote you to a no good destination in Jesus' name. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you shall be graced. I shall be graced. I want you to know we are great already. And even by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will not lose it. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us be seated. Just thank you. the Lord. May God richly bless this word that we've heard in our hearts in Jesus' name. Quickly really go through our weekly activities. Today is Sunday. As usual, every Sunday we get out here by 8.50 a.m. to 11.30 for our Sunday worship. It has been a time of, of refreshing. And as we are coming, we should always try and keep on inviting people. And we pray by the grace of God, God will touch them and bring them here safely in Jesus' name. On Sunday evening is our house fellowship evangelism and visitation which is being alt alternated and today by the grace of god will be in the house fellowship at my house and as we find a time to come and for the fellowship the lord will richly bless you in jesus name and every monday is our bible study from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. is a time where we come and take a microscopic view of the word of the Lord. And by the grace of God, it is a series. It is a chain. We're moving from one chapter to, to the other. And as you are coming, before you know what, you cover up the whole scripture then you'll be bold and strong to defend the word of truth. 
When the, when, when the devil say gay, you will say, tell the devil, gay, gay. When he say hey, you will say hey, 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 hey. And the devil will run in Jesus' name. On the third Monday is our night video from 10 to 12. We come together to pray and to intercede for our nation, for people, and for the church, and ourselves as well. And I must tell you that God at every boarding is rolled away because of our presence in the house of the Lord. And as we come together in agreement to pray, every mountain will be rolled away in Jesus' name. And also on Thursday is the online conference prayer from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. To join the online conference prayer, there is a dialing number, 712-775-7035. And the access code is 344-823. Please kind of log in and join us in that prayer. You will be blessed in Jesus' name. And also, we should take note of our national program. The Youth Fest is, is coming up to June 22nd to June 25th. And also our convention, national convention that is coming up in July. And I don't know if the location is, is, uh, is, uh, is concluded yet. But be preparing yourself. It's going to be a, a time of refreshing and a time of encounter with the Lord. As you come with the heart of expectation, all your needs will be met in Jesus' name. I think that will be all the, all the announcement for now. If there is any addition, it will be related to us later. God bless you. It's time for offering. Offering time. Let's leave our offering before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. You are the God that give it the power to make word. Thank you for, for you watch over us and all our needs you have provided. Now we've brought this token of God in appreciation and to move your work forward. Now we pray, O oh God, that our lives will keep moving forward and never backward in Jesus' name. No limitation, no loss, no retardation. Father, as we are giving, we are giving away every burden, every, pro, pro, every problem we have, O oh God, at the feet of the cross. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Lord is good. He hath done me well, O oh my soul. Rise up and praise the Lord. Lord is good. He hath done me well, O oh my soul. Rise up and praise the Lord. Lord is good. He hath done me well, O oh my soul. Rise up and praise the Lord, Lord is good. He hath done me well, O oh my soul. Rise up and praise the Lord. Amen. It's time for praise and worship.
God. My God reigns. Yes, he reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. Adoration to the Lord. He reigns. Adoration to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Adoration to the Lord, he reign. My God reign, we give glory to the Lord. We give glory to the Lord, he reign. He reigns. Oh, he reign, we give glory to the Lord, he reign. The love of God is a great thing to me. The love of God is a great thing to me. The love of Jesus is a great thing to me. The love of Jesus is a great thing to me. The love of God is a great thing to me. The love of God. Is a great thing to me. The love of Jesus is a great thing to me. The love of Jesus is a great thing to me. I will continue to praise the Lord. I will continue to praise the Lord. I will never tire. I will continue to praise the Lord. 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 I will never tire.
offering unto the Lord this morning. But I, so it's not that I'm afraid of the pulpit. <laughs> if I say it, you've got to click it there. <laughs> Do you count how many children are there in that? <laughs> in that, uh, you know that it's like adult and half children. I will have decided I will just continue to be having children so that this place will be full. But it's not much. All of you will not have a place to sit again. I desire a five. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I wonder what's going on in my mind. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> it is well in Jesus' name. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, it's time for Bible reading. We shall read from the book of Acts, chapter 5. Book of Acts, chapter 5. So that I have told me the more children you have, the more the blessing. So. A man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whiles it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in, and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, 
Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thudas, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who were slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. May God bless his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. We shall listen to choir song.
prisoners that are rise of top. Our mighty Father, we thank you, Lord, for a great opportunity you are giving to us once again this morning. I thank you, Lord, because of all those people you have used to speak to us. I glorify your name because every one of us who are listening, because you let us know to even be a listener is better than being a speaker. Almighty oh, Father, we thank you, Lord, because of grace you are giving to us in this church. That in everything we are doing spiritual matter most, O oh Lord. Father, I set our thanks in Jesus' name. We come, I bring every one of us under your blessing this morning. As we are going to live, we are not going to live anything other than in Jesus' name. But I will not but continue to thank you because of the grace, even because of our marching. You have used to bless us, and then we are using it to touch all the world. Father, I set our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, you want to use so mightfully in Charlotte Free, and this is my grace, this is my joy. Because we are living according to your word, according to your mind. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you continue to help us to the end in Jesus' name. And by the, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will not lose focus in the name of Jesus Christ. Your grace will be sufficient for us. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord and answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Let us be seated. I welcome everyone of us to, to this service. And I wish you are joyful as I am. I know. You know, I like pulling funny things sometimes. <laughs> Sister Deborah, you say, I say, Pap Jesus, you say, eh? <laughs> you better go and ask my brother. When you have 10, that's number one. <laughs> it is well. <laughs> so, I just, <laughs> I just sent to you. <laughs> it is well in Jesus' name. <laughs> I want to appreciate every one of us there, <laughs> including the Kelbas family that they couldn't join us for your prayer because I know you must be praying for us for successfully hosting the national prayer, you know, <laughs> on the Thursday that we say amen. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was happy. But all that our pastor that was invited, there was no one that failed. And then if Brother Stephen was on the line, you will see that the, the, the National Connector make mention of our church. He make one prayer that I was very, very happy. Initially, I didn't, I was a little bit because of our uh, relationship with headquarters. But I thank God we host it successfully. The grace of the Lord will continue to be with every one of us in Jesus' name. And all the pastors that help us from the North Carolina, Georgia, and, and then Maryland, I pray that the grace of the Lord will continue to be with them in Jesus' name. I want to, I wrote a lot of letter to Brother Benjamin, which by the grace of the Lord will follow it up. Then I want us to be planning for uh, uh, Thanksgiving. And then, if church permit me, which I know if I say it now, you will not say no. So it's like I, I become a dictator, but <laughs> if there's any suggestion, you will still let me know. If there's suggestion, I don't want it. We have been hosting it the last year, although successful but not the way I want because of the population because I there's something I kept brass Stephen send the let notes which I kept whenever I'm not happy I only look at that note but whenever I didn't do anything that fine to me I only look at uh, brass Stephen wrote this note that's up that he's not a good man now he wrote this one note for me once so it made, it made me happy and forget whatever he has done <laughs> praise the Lord so if you look at that, you see how I kept the message he sent after the Thanksgiving. You know that sometimes you need to be making people happy. <laughs> it is well in Jesus' name. So if church permit me, if church permit me, Sister Priscilla, 
I want you to be the chairman of the organization one of the Thanksgiving. You will be the chairman of organizing the Thanksgiving. You get what I'm saying? Continue thinking how we are going to have more population. The food you and my wife and the sister Deborah. If it doesn't pick food, call our husbands. Uh, you may decide to don't choose me for a message or something like that. You can choose Brother Benjamin if I allow you, but he will allow you. Or choose another pastor on our side. But make sure that every member, including Brother Benjamin, is here. <laughs> Whatever you can use to, to roll his leg. So from today, please start planning. God will help you. I'm very serious. I may be joking. God will help you. It's impossible. If you can get past all that, that, fine. 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 God will help us. The, the, the church just finished their retreat. And then he always bother about what we are doing. So a lot of things like that. And then I recently sent a lot of letters to Brother Benjamin about a lot of amendments. God will help us in Jesus' name. No matter what we are passing through, uh, we have a leader, we still need to uh, respect them, no matter what the case may be. And we are not the one that passing through, to, through it. This pastor, we talk, we talk a lot. We talk a lot, but God will help everyone of us in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord will be sufficient for us. If there's anything I still have in mind, I will let us know. Today, by the grace of the Lord, I want to speak to all about prayer for the nation. When you are talking about nation, you are talking about a country, you are talking about a continent, or you are talking about the world. It starts from you. And this will not be the first time I will ever tell you that I don't bother about Trump because there is nothing I can do that can affect him. But I bother about my family. I bother about my child. I bother about my own constituency, which is my family. I know whatever I produce from my family is what makes my own a nation. Until maybe a same miracle happens. It is with kind of English I'm speaking, the kind of dressing I'm doing, I will become a president. <laughs> Don't doubt God. <laughs> he can do it. But I know Akiwumi can become the uh, organization, UNO, or World Organization, whatever they call it. I know he can become the president of them. And then I'm doing all what I can do to encourage, to pamper, to talk to him, to do a lot of things, to be a, a good product, a white pap from a black pot. And I know God is going to help every one of us in Jesus' name. We need to be bothered. Some of us that we are in this country, some of us that we come from other country we need to be concerned recently there was an order that okay if you are from the east we give you 30 days leave the north and go back to your country and that thing has always been there that they are not counted as an uh, excuse every time there's a problem in the country whereby you come from. It is not only in that country. During the last election, some of us may not know. I, I, I like mentioning names so that there won't be doubting or we don't get. Some people say it's not good, but maybe because we are very small. Texas was threatening the United States. That, okay. Uh, I think during the last regime, that if this continue like this, this thing continue like this, we we go away from the country they call the United States, because individuals, we are enough 
to stand as a country. When you look at all this kind of thing, you will be thinking, this north that are seen in the country I come from, that the people of the east should live. There's a lot of things that come from the east that God is using to bless the north. Many times, the east, if you want me to be very bold, maybe because of analysis and if I'm wrong, we can correct me. They are for it. God bless them with all. The East always say, okay, we are not consigned. There's nothing we cannot do. And this all have destroyed most of their uh, land. But when you are looking at the North, they have a lot of farming. When you are talking about tomato, rice, everything, they are producing a lot. But you know when devil want to fight, what it uses is this. It will blindfold everybody so that the sovereignness can be too much. Imagine, imagine the let me be mentioning him, please. Just pardon me. Imagine North and South Korea. Look at them. Look when you look at one of them, look at the South Korea, look at the North Korea. And look at two of them. You will find it difficult to. You will know that this is a, a product of the same father, the same mother. And they do not like each other. And they will blindfold them. I was only thinking that what about if this country come together and they become one? You know that thing happened during the West and East Germany. Until war was broken. Imagine they have not come together and they are still fighting. And they are the same journey and they are fighting. The money, what? But this have not taught all other countries like my country or even some states here they only even say it. That after all we just agreed that we should come. They, some of them they, uh, they invited them that they should come and join the United States. It takes them a lot of time like Maryland before they decided that okay we are coming to join. But a lot of time, they will still say, we are going to separate. Then, 